Just think about it. Just think about it. It's God's will that every single soul be healed. Every body be healed. It's God's will. He's not willing that any perish. He's not interested in anybody being sick and disease. It's just the fact of it is, is people are stuck. They don't know how to enter in the realm. Yeah. So what happens is we get 10 to 20, maybe 30% on a good night of people healed. Yeah. The rest of the people go home sick. It wasn't God's will just to enter into the realm. Reality of it is, is the church is going to have to be willing to enter into the realm for everybody. Everybody who's already come to faith. Everybody who knows the realms of, of, of the miraculous. So that knows the realms of the gifts of healing. Knows the realms of the spirit. Have got to go ahead and step over into that place so the atmosphere is fully charged with all the Father has purposed us to participate with. He's given us everything that pertains to life of godliness. We're without excuse. He's given everything we need. He's, he's given us to the unlimited measure of his, of his glory, of his anointing. And, and it's time God's people can have to go there. I watch, I watch all the time. I've been pastoring for 33 years. And, and my dad is a pastor and evangelist, so I've been at this program for almost 56 years now. And we've watched. And I'm telling you what, we're laying hold on something. We're not going to stop. We're going to continue to prophesy to, uh, to it. It doesn't matter how many people don't understand us and how many people wonder, what do I got to do different? I'm telling you what you need to do different is to fall, in a greater, fall into love with Jesus in a greater way. Be more passionate about him. Seize him. Lay hold on him. Don't let him go. Grab a hold of him. Grab him. Take hold. Lay hold. Seize him. Don't want anything else. Don't need anything else. Nothing else has power over you. You say, Father, take your power. Come reign over me. All I want is your will. Lord, I give myself completely over to you. You execute your will over me. Come rule over me. Just want you, just, want you, just, before, just before Evangelist Tim Hall comes, I, just want, I, want you, I want you to just close your eyes, lift your hands towards heaven. I just want you, to, I want you to yield yourself to the living God. I want you to forget about all the rest of the stuff because all this is about is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. All this is about is the realms of the spirit of the holiness being able to execute the heavenly realm in our lives over everything about our lives. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that it's your will that everybody be healed, 100% of the people be healed. We thank you, Father, that it's your will that 100% of the people be touched by your power and by your glory be, be delivered from torment and oppression. Father, we thank you that it's your will that every man learn how to walk in the beauty of your life and no longer be gripped by sin and the twisted power of death. So, Father, we just thank you right now. Holy Spirit, we thank you right now for doing a work that goes beyond the ability of any human being. Lord, we thank you for that sincere and willing hearts here in this place that would receive from you. Religion to keep you away from, listen, religion to keep you out of the realms of the anointing as much as sin will. I'm telling you right now, it would keep you out just as much as sin will. It's time to get, it's time to get into a relationship where you're more hungry for God, you're more interested in touching heaven than being seen by men. That's why we ask you to close your eyes. That's the whole reason we ask you to close your eyes. So you just shut everything else out that otherwise you would be participating with. Let us, in, let us instruct you in the ways of God. He anointed us with the ability to do so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not sufficient of ourselves. <laughs> As though we trusted in our own supply. God has anointed us with the Holy Spirit to testify. To raise, up a, to raise up a church, to raise up a mighty army, not just a few, with faces like lions, run like horses, can't be stopped. Hallelujah. Filled with all the goodness of the power of the living God. Filled with every dimension, growing up into all things that Jesus has. Growing up into him, into all things. Hallelujah. <laughs> Who is our head? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you right now that unforgiveness has to go out of the house. The doubt and unbelief has to go out of the house. Lord, that every form of sin and iniquity that people have held on to has to go out of the house. So, Lord, that you might freely be able to do all the things that you purpose to do here in this place. That no one walks out of here sick or diseased. 
that no one walks out of here addicted to anything under the power or the authority of sickness or, or sin, either one. Torment has to leave the place. Pain has to leave the place. Affliction has to leave the place. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Katana exeto. Give it to you. You're on. Well, hallelujah. Should be on. Should be on. Hello. You're on. You're on. Hello. You are now Caleb. On. No, uh, Josh. <laughs> you can look after that. Hi, Jake. Like your teeth. Is that Josiah up there? How are you? I look around for my mates. <laughs> you all happy tonight? Yeah. yeah. Jolly yes. good to see you, by the way. Jolly good. We're down here tonight. We're, it's cozy. Everybody happy? Yes. Well, I better go up there like a gazelle. Yeah, I, I, am I off? Oh, there we go. Beautiful. I'm down two, two shirt sizes. Two. Yeah. Yes. Am I still on? You know, I, I didn't introduce you. There's people here that don't know who you are. Tim Hall's been in the ministry for, he's like as old as Methuselah. That hurt. And that hurt. You've been in the ministry that long. You're now here celebrating your 40th year. This is in my ministry. 40th year this year. And yeah. uh, God raised him up. 40 in the next years. Of, yeah. 40 years. And. You know, I look, I look at Tim as, as a father figure in my life and, and, and the things of the Spirit, especially the works of the apostles in his life. And he's, you know, the Lord Jesus is going to change nations and shake nations with the power of signs and wonders and miracles by the name of Jesus. And so, I mean, I don't know if you kept track of everybody that's gotten saved and delivered and set free and healed in your meetings, but I know it's... All their names written down. They're all their names are all the Indian out. names. The Lord tabulated uh, them, but, but it's been Shiva Rova Krishnan and his brother Harry, and the, we've got them all sure. there. Sure, but I mean, just the last, the last. Are you going to do some shows? No, I'm going to show some tonight? pictures. Yeah, December we, in December we had forty thousand saved. That is awesome. That was a good. That was a good month. That was a good month. We we had a big year last year, but this year is shaping up. This year is shaping up to be a very big year, and. Uh, you know, you, there's an expectation. When you're 66, I've just turned 66, and I worked that out, that that's two-thirds of the way to 100. Um, <laughs> uh, I was brought up watching television, watching The Three Stooges, and those programs were made in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And uh, I was born in 1948, three years after the Second World War finished. And uh, people now think that was the same year that Noah's Ark landed. <laughs> And you suddenly realize that you actually are at a point where you want to make these next few years go because you don't know how many you've got. A lot of my friends have dropped dead. They're gone. A lot of my friends, gone. Most of them thought I'd be gone first because I was fat. But I said, my mother, my mother passed away last year. She's 99 years and 10 months. She died two, just, just a month, two months before her 100th birthday. But... I thought about it. She was nine months in the womb, and as far as I was concerned, she's a living person from the day of conception. So she was actually over 100 years on this planet, even though she was in her mother's womb for nine months. And she was always fat, so there's hope for me. But I'm losing it now, and mind you, I've come in very seriously about my food, and uh, Pastor Anne brought out some pie yesterday that was unbelievable, absolutely disgusting that I ate it and I had with ice cream. I haven't touched that stuff for so long, but it was so tasty. If you've tasted Anne's pie, what was it? What, blackberry, blueberry? It was magnificent. In fact, my mouth, I've got saliva running here. It is great to be here because I feel like I'm with family. I know I'm with family. I've watched the kids grow up. I mean, there's, uh, and they're all growing. I mean, I remember when you, Jake, were knee high to a grasshopper. Look at you now. You've got new teeth. Haven't you? You've got second teeth. 
Come up here, show them to us. Let's have a good look at them. So look, flash them like this. See mine? They look pretty good, don't they? They're expensive. You got yours for nothing. I had to go to the dentist and he did a lot of work, so don't eat candy. Do you like candy? Eat moderate, moderate amounts, moderate. So if, if your granddad, Dave, gives you lots of candy, restrict it. Anything to say to the people? What do they need to get saved? Live for Jesus. How have you been anyway? Haven't got married since I saw you last? Still single? Uh, going well, business, thriving? Making money? Yeah. What have you been up to? Not much? Young lady in your life? Not engaged, married, nothing like that? No. You like it up here? Want to be a preacher one day? Thought you might. All right, you can go. Bless you. Bless you. That's it. And uh, Josiah, how tall are you now? Stand up. Oh my goodness, what are they feeding you on? Unbelievable, he's about six foot three. <laughs> Sit down there, mate. Josh, how you doing, mate? Stand up, still got the red hair? Is that Caleb? Oh yeah, there's, yeah, there's Caleb up there. Yeah, that's Josh. What are you pretending to be Caleb for? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good flock of red hair. I love red hair. I'd love red hair. I'd love to be tall. I said to the Lord, I want to be big. And I kept going sideways. I said, why am I not tall? He said, because I didn't stress which direction. Let's have, a word of, <laughs> let's have a word of prayer. Lovely to see you all. It is lovely to see you all. Father, thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the anointing. You're going to come and touch us tonight. You're going to come and touch us tonight. You're already touching us. Stepping in, stepping in, stepping in. Oh, Jesus, give us a big drink of the new wine. Let healing power break loose. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I, uh, I would like to honour Pastor Mark tonight just say that over the years there's three men in the world who and there's three men that have inspired me um there's been some great women preachers in history that i've studied and have impacted me but of living people there are three men that have impacted my life the most have the biggest impact in evangelism it's been reinhard bonke he's my been my hero for many many years rodney howard brown I can't put my finger exactly why, just Rodney, and the awesomeness of who he is and what he carries, what he does. And in the Word of God, I've never met anybody in all my travels all over the world, at any time, in any country, in any place, that carries the Word of God like Pastor Mark. I don't know anyone that has the grip of the Word. We sat and we've been discussing Revelation for most of the last two days. And uh, I want to tell you, it's been absolutely brilliant and it's been a joy to fly in just to talk as the things we've talked today. And it's a bonus to preach tonight. I'd like, would you like to see a little bit of what we've been doing? Yeah. Like a quick trip. I'll just show you. Some of these are older pictures. I, I sent this off to uh, the last place I was just to show them what we do. Uh, is that the first one? Is that number one? Yeah. There's no order. They just go as they go. That was a little kid in uh, Namibia a few months ago. Never heard, never, never spoken, never heard. First word out of the mouth was Jesus. And, and that was just, she was just gorgeous. Little, look at that little kid. And looked me right in the eye and then says, Jesus. And I thought, Lord, anyway, that's, that was good. That was in Namibia, in Africa. Next one. Uh, that was a, a crusade. That's uh, moving on. That's a whole lot of gnomes at Christmas time. They all, fini they all finished up under the power of God, all those gnomes. They're actually, it was a Christmas thing. This was Myanmar just a few months ago. We, we had a most extraordinary time. Myanmar has been under military rule for a number of years. Two years ago, if you went to Myanmar, 
uh, as a person from Australia or America, you would be restricted at your hotel to traveling no further than 50 kilometers from your hotel. It's about 30 miles. And uh, to make disciples was a, pretty much impossible. Things were happening there, but it was difficult. And then the, the door just opened for us. We went there the last two years in December. The first year we preached four days at a place called, um, uh, anyway, we preached there. And uh, we had 86,000 people through in four nights. And I don't know how many got saved, just huge numbers got saved. We went back this year. We went into Myanmar, that's formerly Burma. And uh, the first place we went to was a, was a place called Tedim. And no one had been out there for a long, long time. We went out, I had the Planet Shakers band with me. And we went out, they were in a bus. They told us later that three buses a year go over this road. Um, the band were looking out the window straight down. Couldn't see the side of the road. They're looking straight down. I was in a four wheel drive, but every now and again that thing would slip around on the road. I think, here we go, heaven, here we come. But we got there, there was 9,000 people. They'd never seen a crowd like it. And uh, the Spirit of the Lord hit the place, the paralyzed. We get a couple of paralyzed people got raised up. Um, all sorts of miracles. Everything broke out there. And I guess uh, two thirds of that crowd gave their life to Christ, was saved. Um, we drove back and we came back to uh, Kalimu, that's right, to this place. And um, we had three nights there. The place packed out the last night, probably around the 30,000 on the last night um, in the meeting, uh, 20,000, 25, probably, and then 30. And of those, every night, half that crowd got saved and made decisions. Some nights, just about everybody had their hand up. The miracles broke out. Uh, the cripples were walking, the deaf and the mute and the everything was getting, everybody just, the miracles breaking out. We went back to Yangon, which is formerly called Rangoon. And uh, we had a 4,000 seat stadium, and uh, which we just want to get our, our foot in the door. And so we went in there and um, awesome meetings, miracles everywhere. But they said to me, they said, Tim, there is a, a crusade up the road. They have about 20,000 people and the speaker was unable to get his, uh, his visa and they haven't got a speaker, and they've requested, would you come? So what you have to do is preach the gospel in the afternoon and uh, go flat out there in the afternoon and then get in a car and drive two and a half hours and then preach again to the crowd and then drive home two and a half hours. Are you up to it? And I said, if there's a chance to preach out there to 20,000 and get a lot of people saved, I'm up to pretty much anything. I've learned that in Myanmar, if they say it's a two-hour drive, it's not. Um, I preached, we had a move of God, preached in, in Yangon, tremendous release of the Holy Ghost, got in the car, four hour drive, preached the gospel, um, had a great move of God, probably six or seven thousand saved, uh, got in the car, drove four hours back and from one o'clock in the morning to one the next morning, preached two crusade meetings, big altar calls to thousands of people, probably had uh, 10,000 or more saved and uh, we had driven for eight hours. And so they said, you don't want to do that again tomorrow, do you? I said, get me a faster driver, we'll do it again. That was a bad thing to request. We did do it quicker. Um, we had near death experiences most of the way. Um, we, we survived. And I remember on the, the uh, second night, there was, a, um, there was a young child that was in a coma. And they brought the child up. And I had preached that night about some people being raised from the dead in meetings. A couple of times in our meetings, people have been raised from the dead, which is exciting. Uh, one little child had been dead for about three hours and was raised up in one of our meetings in Papua New Guinea. And uh, I got up and I talked about how we got the crowd to clap and cheer on one of these things. And as we shouted and yelled, that little boy came alive in my arms. That's the first time I'd ever seen the dead raised. So I said to one of the guys, you come over here and hold this little child and we'll shout, we'll take authority and we'll declare victory. And as we shouted and screamed, a little child come out of the coma and sat up and, and that, that doesn't hurt a meeting. So by the time we left there, we'd probably, who knows how many people, people got saved. That's just a, a guesstimate at Fort. It could have been far more, but it's only touching the surface. You know, we can get excited about how many get saved, but it's only scratching the surface. It's just scratching 
surface. Yeah. Let's have a look at the next one. That was South Africa, a little lady at one of the townships. We had wheelchairs and things, just a little meeting out in the bush. That's a few years back, actually. Next one. I don't know why that's there. That was last year. We had uh, three weeks in uh, South Africa, 2,000 saved in churches. Next one. And that top one, South Africa, that's an altar call at the bottom. Um, only God knows how many people actually came to the Lord. We're on television out over the country to about 30 locations. I know in just one of those locations there was about 200 saved and in the meeting there was about three or 400. So who knows, we don't know how many. That was just one day. But uh, South Africa has become a really open door to us um, and it's getting wider. We're going back again this year. Next one, that was at Rodney's a year or so ago. We had 1,408 saved. You might have seen that before, I don't know. That was a couple of years ago, 1,408 decisions in that morning and, and so many crutches and sticks handed up to the front. It was, and that's uh, Tampa, Florida, that's not overseas. Next one, that was Yangon, that's souls being saved up in, uh, no, that was in Kalimu up in um, Burma, in Myanmar. Next one. Uh, that was, that, <laughs> yeah, we jumped that one. That was actually, this, that was actually uh, Guadalcanal. First ever, first ever crusade that I ever did on a mass scale was on Guadalcanal um, back in about 1988, right on a battle site where the Americans fought the Japanese, where you guys saved Australia there on that island, and uh, called the Hungry Island. There were 25,000 Japanese killed, about 3,000 Marines. Um, most of the Japanese died of hunger. They called it the Hungry Island, but we're going back this year. And it's been 1988, 98, 2008. That's a lot of years ago. And we're going back this year. And uh, I'm believing that for something bigger to happen there. Um, I don't know how many got saved there. The stadium was packed. And uh, one in five of the city got saved in, that, in those meetings. The Prime Minister had us in there. We're going back this year. And uh, that is going to be sensational. And that was Papua New Guinea this year. I was up in, uh, uh, where was it? I don't know. New Britain, uh, somewhere. One of the places up there. We, I go up there every year. Not this year, but the next year we're, we're planning to hit the nation and do crusades all over the country. So you, you guys will need to be involved in that where we take a number of locations and maybe into Erie and Yara and, uh, and absolutely hit it and then come back and finish it off with a major thing with maybe 80 or 100,000 in the, in the stadium back in Moresby and, uh, and take the nation. Take the nation. Take the nation. We're, we're, we're not here just to whistle Dixie. We're not here just to whistle Dixie. You know the beautiful thing Guy came up to me one day and he said, Tim, you inspire me, you inspire me. And I felt pretty good about that. And I started, my ego was being tickled. And I said, why is that? He says, because if God can use you, he can use anybody. <laughs> and the truth of it is, not many mighty, not many noble, God's chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And the good news is that there are people here, if you can dare to believe it, who he is preparing to go yeah. and have major meetings across the nations on a scale that you've never dreamed, uh, preaching to great uncountable multitudes. Yeah. And he's, the world is waiting, the whole of creation is groaning, eagerly, earnestly awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. I believe the word to earnestly anticipate and expect means to stretch your head and look, to stretch the head and wait in expectation. They're waiting for someone to come carrying the power of God. The world is not waiting for more preachers. The world is not waiting for more people to come and preach a nice communicating message. Yeah. The world is waiting for men and women of God loaded, like loaded guns to come into uh, their environment and stir the waters of faith so that they can jump in and touch the manifest power and presence of God. Yes. 
And I want to put the challenge to you. Put the challenge to you. How many young men, how many young women, older men, older women here are saying, look, we've been around the bush a long time. We've been around this mountain a long time. It's time for us to begin to go and take nations. I've been looking at my planner this year and I'm weary reading it. We've got crusades in Vanuatu. We have the biggest event ever planned in Vanuatu in the South Pacific. Uh, churches all coming together this year. Uh, who knows, 10,000 a night, but it'll be the biggest thing that's ever happened in that country. Where we've got an invitation to go into Tonga. We've got invitations to go into uh, wherever right now. And I'm working with a new guy that's going to go in ahead of me and set things up and pulling things together and starting to believe God, how can we raise the amount of money that has to be raised to do the stuff we have to do. I've had people saying, why don't you retire? And I said, why don't you go and jump in the lake? Why don't you take a two mile walk on a one mile jetty with no water wings? <laughs> what do you do? Buy a Volvo car, put a hat on, buy a cat, grow tomatoes and sit in a rocking chair. Not, not me. Not me, not you. You're born with destiny in your heart. You wake up with destiny. You wake up in the morning knowing that you've been born for some great task. You're born to do exploits. Next one. This is, this is just saying hello. Oh, that's an old one. That's, that's an old one from the National Stadium in Port Moresby, but that's where we'll be in 16, and that thing will have 100,000 people, 80 to 100,000 people, and we'll, that whole nation will be impacted in, I don't know whether we'll go a week or two weeks, but we'll run crusades all over that nation and then slam an entire... It's time to slam nations. Next one. Yep, next one. And that was souls in Myanmar, just about 6,000 that night, 7,000 people coming to Christ. The greatest sight in the world is seeing people by the multitude streaming into the kingdom of God. There's no more addictive sight. There's nothing that can stir your heart like seeing vast multitudes into the kingdom. Lovely to see Mrs. Skonkin here tonight too. She's a lovely lady. Uh, her boys are champions and she's wonderful. And great to see you guys tonight. Sneaking up from Oceanside. Next one. Well, that was the hall in Yangon, but it must have gone well because they've been talking to us about a 50,000 a night stadium for a healing crusade, which they'll pay for. And I thought, that's music to the ears. Yeah. We're pre preparing a 100,000 a night crusade up in uh, Sri Lanka. We've got crusades through the islands. We've got India's opened up. Um, there's stuff. And uh, I'm just trying to get myself into a place with the Lord's help where this old body is fit enough to take on the task. And uh, I just want to shed the old skin and come out of it in a new place to do another 34 years would be good. I'd like to, I'd like to yes. drop dead at 101 <laughs> preaching. Just drop, just not even drop dead, just go in the rapture. Yeah. I believe in the rapture of the church. Yeah. I believe there's a great snatching away. I believe, I believe that Jesus is coming soon. I, I believe he's coming in glory. I believe that he will tread the winepress of the fierce wrath of almighty God. Who is this? that comes out of Basra, his robes dipped in blood, tis I mighty to say, I have trod the fierce winepress of the wrath of Almighty God alone. They'll turn, they'll turn their weapons on him. They'll turn their weapons on him, which is a very stupid thing to do. <laughs> this is not the lamb coming to be crucified. This is the lion coming with hair white like wool, eyes blazing like bronze in the furnace, 
robe dipped in blood, and this is not his own blood. This is the blood of the winepress of the fierce wrath of Almighty God. Out of his mouth comes a sharp two-edged sword that with he should smite the nations. He's called the word of God in righteousness. He wages war. On his thigh he has a name. King of kings. Lord of lords. He's in a covenant relationship with someone. It may just be you and I. And he's coming again. He's coming again. Jude prophesied the Lord coming with 10,000 of his saints in glory. People are messing around and going, oh, we've heard that before. Yep, it's been heard a lot. It doesn't mean it's not going to happen. That's you right. say, when's it going to happen? No idea. All I know is that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the earth. This same gospel that the apostles preached, this gospel of dominion, the, the gospel of the kingdom yeah. of heaven. Yeah. What, what, what does the word kingdom mean? The dominion, the rule, the basileia, the rule, the authority, the dominion, the dominion over disease, the dominion over devils, the dominion over fear, the dominion over uh, depression, the, the dominion over sin, the, the dominion, this gospel of the kingly dominion of heaven. Yeah. Not just John 3.16. All the nations of the earth, the ones that aren't even open yet. Yes. Then yeah. shall the then shall the end come. Yeah. When that's finished, I'm off. When that's finished, I'm gone. <laughs> Bhutan. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think I better preach the word. That was just saying hello. I'd like you to turn with me, please, to the book of Philippians. When was Philippians written? About 60 to 62 AD? Paul in prison, writing to the Philippian church. And he writes some interesting stuff. And I want to look at this tonight and uh, relate it to you and I. And as to me, this is, you know, I don't know if you have people, I'm sure Pastor Mark, people come up and they say, brother, um, now what is the word that the Lord's spoken to you concerning the coming year? God spoke to me and said that it was the year of the uh, Urim and Thummim and the tabernacle of the divine grace of the angelic beings and uh, that the angel's wings will be heard swishing through the air as the very uh, glory fills the house. And they say, I oh, said, so that's incredible, well done. And, and uh, they say, what did God say to you? I say, uh, stay hungry. What did he say to you? Just keep doing what you do. Just keep, keep plundering. Uh, well, yes, didn't he give you some specific word that this is the year of the... I mean, it is the year of Jubilee this year. According to the calendar, isn't it, Pastor Mark? Or is that next year? 2017. Oh, tw well, why are they saying it's this year? What's wrong with them? They're, 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 they're not oh, they don't know the calendar. Not like you and I. They're Christian theologians. They're Christian theologians. So, they're, so they're, they all reckon it's this year. They're just a couple of years early. But, <laughs> well, it's, well, a year of Jubilee is going to be good. But this year, I got a word from God. I woke up and God gave me a word and it impacted me. I woke up one morning and it was as though it, there'd been a whole lot of stuff that was just really frustrating. And I was frustrated and I, annoyed with a whole lot of stuff and trying to work out what makes Christians tick. Some of you have tried that and you just don't get an answer. There's all sorts of Christians, lazy ones, stupid ones, well-meaning ones that are thick. There's really good ones, sensible ones, hard-working ones, lazy as anything ones. Christians. I woke up and it was like on the inside something just poof. I could feel the power of God. And I had a word from God. And, this, and I knew that it was a word from God. There's a word that, um, it's a Greek word. Now I know a little Greek, Con Papadopoulos, he's a good friend. Ted Xanthopoulos. 
Stan the Man Longanitas, eight times world kickboxing champion, is a close friend of mine. He's Greek. And his brother, George the Iron Lion, also a world champion. They're my personal trainers right now. I can't go wrong. One of them eight times, the other one one. But I'm not, I've, been try, I've been getting into the Greek and studying the Greek and, and trying to get hold of the Greek because it seems to be far more expressive and often far more powerful than English. And I think it's... Uh, I like it better than English. I, I wish I was Greek, really. Except they, it's the old Greek, the Koine Greek. But the word was katalambano. Is that how you pronounce that word, Pastor? Katalambano. That's my word. So what's your word for the year? My word for this year is katalambano. I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, sounds exciting, katalambano. Tell them. <laughs> turn to someone behind you and say, kata, katalambano. Yeah. How many feel good about that? How many feel a great sense of uh, revelation with that? Let me look at this scripture here. And I want to read a piece of what I think is one of the most powerful uh, chapters in the Bible. I mean, every chapter of the Bible is just loaded, but I love Philippians. And Paul is writing and he, he outlines in chapter three a little bit about himself and about his background, how he was a persecutor and how he had uh, done everything right as a Hebrew, kept the law and so on. But then he goes on and he says in verse seven, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. All the things that mattered, I counted them as loss. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the intimate knowledge of Jesus Christ. He said, nothing else even matters. And then he says, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and all the things that I've lost, I count but dung that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And then he, this is a powerful verse and we pray half of it. That I might know him. How many have prayed that? Lord, that I might know you. That I might know you. That I might come into an intimate knowledge of you. I want to know you intimately. I want to know you personally. But Paul didn't stop there. He said, uh, he says that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to live in resurrection power. When we begin to move in the power of God, we are moving in resurrection power. What we are carrying in our hands and in our words is life. It's the same power that was there at the garden tomb. I stood there just a few months ago at the garden tomb, wept like a baby in that place. Uh, it was extraordinary. Whether it's the right tomb, I think it is, Gordon's tomb. It was extraordinary. And, uh, but all I could think about was that I might know the power of his resurrection, the power that caused him to pass through those grave clothes and that dead body that had been battered and smashed rose triumphant from the dead. And he says, I want you to know the power that was there in that tomb. And I don't just want you to know it, I want you to walk in it. I want you to carry it. I want it in me, out of me. I want to stand up before a multitude of people. I want to canopy of resurrection power to go out over that crowd that I might know him and the power of his resurrection I don't pray the next bit that much the fellowship of his sufferings the koinonia we're together, this is fellowship to be part of to belong gathered together of his sufferings Oh, okay. Crucifixion, scourging. I think I'd pray the first couple. Being made conformable unto his death. That's a pretty rugged prayer that Paul prayed and he lived it. He lived it. Scourged, beaten, stoned, flogged till his back would have been a striped like a ploughed field covered in scars, and finally taken out on the Appian Way and beheaded under the direction of Nero. He fulfilled that. He says, if by any means I might attain under the resurrection of the dead, he says, I want to fill this, fulfill this thing. I want to finish this thing. 
I'm going to go through with this thing. Whatever it costs. Whatever I have to go through. Whatever I have to do, I want to fulfill this thing. And he says, not as though I had already attained. That's the word lambano, which means to seize, to take hold of. Lambano is, there's a, a touch of violence about it. It's a strong seizing, taking hold. Not that I'd get really seized and taken hold of all of these things. Not that I've yet grabbed hold, really, of everything that I'm called to. I haven't grabbed I haven't seized it yet. Either we're already perfect or complete, or have finished my course, or have done what I'm called to do. I, I love what it says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. It says, Take unto you the whole armour of God, that you may... Withstand in the evil that you, that you may withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Basically, having done everything you're called to do, you're still standing. When the battle's over and you've achieved everything that you were called to do, you're still standing and standing strong, saying, "Whatever's left, bring it on." And then he says this. He says, "Brethren," uh, he says. Not that I already obtained or were already complete, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth and of those things before I press towards the mark. Interesting bit of scripture. He says, not that I've yet seized hold of everything that is there for me to, to do and be. Not that I'm yet in the place that I want to be. How many feel like that sometimes? How many feel like that often? I feel like it, I feel like it all the time. I have a constant sense of satisfied unsatisfaction. A constant sense that I've got to push out. A constant sense that, I, that if I settle and I'm happy with where I'm at right now, I've got a problem. A constant sense of having done nothing. After 40 years of ministry, I have an incredible sense of having achieved not much. Crusades all over the world just feel as though if that's it, it's a drop in the bucket. It's, and where am I at? Am I in that place? Have I touched that place? Have I got into that dimension with God? Have I... Have I sought God in the word and in prayer and got into that place carrying and moving in that dimension of power that's there for me if I want it. Right. I think few people, few people find the place in God and the dimension of power and the, the impacting fullness of what they can be in Christ what they can do. Right. And every person in this room, myself, yourself, all of us, we all want to finish this course as it is. And Paul says, brethren, he says, I, I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I also am appre apprehended of Christ Jesus. It's a stronger word. He's, he says, I follow after if that I may apprehend. The word there is catalambano. It's a much stronger word. Cutter, down. What is the meaning of cutter actually, Pastor? Cutter. Against, Against down. It, it throws a strength into that seizing. It takes it from grabbing hold to really pulling that thing to yourself. He says, not that I have yet reached out and grabbed my destiny yet to the full. Not that I have yet fully apprehended and seized what I'm called to. I haven't seized yet everything that's there for me. He said, I follow after it that I may actually apprehend everything for which I am apprehended of Christ. He says, I'm following because I want to seize hold of everything for which Jesus seized me. Same word, catalambano. And I thought about that and I thought, 
what did Jesus do to seize me? What did Jesus actually do to seize me from going to hell? He left his earthly, heavenly place, emptied himself and came in the form of a man, humbled himself, took the form of a man, and he came, he says, I came, it's written in the book of the law, a body there has prepared for me. John the Baptist saw him. And when he came down there to the Jordan, John the Baptist said, behold, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And the very term, the Lamb of God, the picture that people had of was a lamb slain, the blood pouring from that lamb and being sprinkled. The very first statement of John there, or well, the first time that Jesus was pointed out by John, he said, behold, this is the lamb that's going to be slain for the whole world. He's a sacrificed lamb. He began his ministry with a declaration of death. The death that Jesus died when he sees me, Catalambano. How did he seize me? He confronted everything that could be thrown, everything the devil could throw at him. Tied to a whipping post and scourged with a Roman scourge with pieces of metal and glass until his back would have hung in strands to his feet in total agony. They say that the first few marks of that lash would just open you up and after that it was like pouring boiling oil into those marks until his back was ripped to pieces. That's Catalambano. He is seizing me out of darkness. Seizing me from hell. Then they took him. That thing jammed on his head with those thorns into his skull and dragged him away and nailed him naked to the cross and raised him up there, covered in blood, torn to pieces. The Bible says, marred beyond any man, the beard ripped from his face, his body, a mass of blood and, and, and torn flesh and hung him up there between heaven and earth. That is Catalambano. That's how he sees me. How should I seize him? Right. If that's how he sees me, what do I have to do or be? What risk do I have to take? What attitude do I have to have to seize in response yeah. to him seizing me? Yeah. I watched that movie, The Passion of the Christ. I remember as I watched that movie, The Passion of the Christ, as he was being scourged, I just wept and I kept saying, Jesus, I have never responded. I have never truly responded to what you've done. I've potted around, insipid, half-hearted, the body of Christ even today, how is it responding to the intensity of the price that was paid for it? Christians living in sin, getting around, God winking at sin, Christians getting around half-baked, couldn't care about the harvest. Someone once said, and I think it's true, if we don't have a passion for the harvest, we need to check very seriously, we're not still part of it. Paul said, he said, I am following hard that I may apprehend, that I might apprehend that for which I was apprehended. I'm going to seize hold of that for which Jesus so powerfully, Catalambano, seized hold for me. He says, brethren, brethren's a good word. It means brother. But from what I understand, the word going way back to the times of Alexander was used with a slightly different connotation. Right back in the beginning, when a, when a battle took place, 
and a young man was brave in that battle, had, had achieved great things in the battle. Alexander would bring him up onto the, the dais and say, this is my brother, a man in the battle. This is my brother. I know the word means brother, but it adds another dimension. I, w- I, I, want, go- I, I want God to, s- to see me as a brother in the battle. Jesus is not ashamed to call us brethren. I want to have a go for God. I even look at those pictures and think, my God, that's exciting. But if you're carried away by that and you think that's good, then you're so far from the mark. The question is, at 66, Jesus, what? How can I apprehend and seize hold of the next dimension? How? Can I cease? What do I have to do? Where do I have to go? Where do you want me? What risk do you want me to take? Where? God, tell me. I've set March aside to go away. I go in the mountains every year, but this year I feel like God's saying, I want you to take that one word, Catalambano. I want you to seize something in the spirit that you've never touched before. I want you to seize Something in that realm of the miraculous. I want you to seize something. He says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I haven't seized it yet. I haven't got, I'm not there yet. This is Paul writing. He's already been used phenomenally. Phenomenally. Breaking open places, sweeping moves of God, miracles. He says, but I do this. He said, I'm forgetting the things that lie behind. And God said to me, Tim, even your successes, just let them stir you, but don't dwell on them. Be stirred by them. Don't dwell on them. We made a, I should send some over. We made a, a um, we sent out a, a newsletter of things for the last year. And it's all great, great meetings, great crusades, great, great crowds, great miracles. You know something? It's all finished. Today's newspaper becomes the the bottom of a parrot cage. In the old days, the newspaper used to be used to wrap up your fish and chips. The fish and chip shop. You don't know what fish and chips are, probably. Today's paper becomes fish and chip wrapping. All of our successes today soon pass. I know preachers that have had great success. I know one preacher... I used to know him really well. He was one of the great men in our nation. And last few years, young, the young generation don't even know who he is. All of his success. Who was he? Yesterday's gone. It's gone. Our failures, forget them. You had a failure in the past, haven't we all? Fallen short, haven't we all? Messed up, haven't we all? It's not, it's not where we've been. It's where we are and where we're going. You say, well, I was in the ministry, I'm an eight man, blah, 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 blah. it's gone, it's over. You can't change it. See, people batter themselves and batter themselves and batter themselves over things they've done and things they've missed and living in regret, it's over. You got today. You got today. Regret. You see people in regret and they live in regret. I sold this property when I shouldn't have. If I'd hung on to it, it'd be worth millions. I, sold, I gave a painting away a few years. A few years back, I gave a painting away and uh, I gave it to a friend of mine. It was worth about $40,000. He'd blessed the ministry so much, I blessed him with a painting. One the same size by the same artist, sold for $2.4 million. I had regret. 
giving regret. But not really. Not really. I can't look back and say, oh, if I if I'd done, hadn't done that, oh, I'd be. He did. Move on. Business deals. If only. If only I lost all this. Start again. Go again. Paul says, forgetting those things that lie behind. He had enough stuff to look back on there that he could, his ego would have been, if he'd looked back and said, look how, look at the incredible things I've done. He says, I'm forgetting that stuff. I'm on a course. And I've got a course not to look at what I've done or who I am or what, my, uh, what, what people think of me or what anyone says about me. I'm not interested in any of that stuff. There's something I've got right now and I've got to apprehend. I've got a catalambano. I have to seize what is mine now. I'd take hold of the next phase. What's the next phase for you? What do you have to do? What's your next phase? What's God saying for your family? What's he saying in your life? What's he saying about your studies? What's he saying about your prayer? What's he saying about this coming era because there's people here that God has put his hand on to do the extraordinary. But I've discovered that a vision without a strategy never comes to anything. Right. A vision without a strategy is a fading dream. People live on prophecies. Someone prophesied, you're going to be the greatest apostle that ever walked, that moves in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't care who prophesies something over, over you like that. You live on a prophecy. I see people waiting for their prophecy to come in. You don't see it happen. A prophecy or a dream or a vision without a strategy is a non-event. Right. There's people waiting for their ministry to drop on them. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. They think destiny is going to come in the letterbox. Something happens when something down the inside says, I'm forgetting yesterday and I'm striving now and taking hold of God. I'm, I'm seizing in my relationship with God my destiny. But more than anything, I'm seizing him. I'm going to come into a place with him where my destiny is just worked out and begins to flow. I've discovered that if you go hungering after ministry, it seems to be elusive. But if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things are added. And I find that ministry is simply giving what you have to others. The Lord spoke to me one day and he said, I was saying, God, I'd love to preach there and I'd love to go and preach in that church, I'd love to go there. And I felt the Lord say, if you get with me and let me program into you the things that I want to program into your life and you, you let me put things in and you let me feed you in the word and you let me put those things into you, then I will take you to the places that require what I have given you and programmed into you because I've put it into you so that you can take it to them so that the thing that they need is in you and you become the means of reaching them. He's not going to open doors for me to preach because I'm Tim Hall. He's going to open doors for me because what I've touched and what I'm carrying is what that place needs. Yeah. You all okay? Okay? This is what he's saying to me. I, I mess around a bit. I know that. I fool around a bit. But this, this is what God is saying to me. I don't want to miss. I used to think, ah, oh, if only I was 30 at this time, just coming into it. No, I don't want to be 30. 40 years is like completing your probation for your license. You're just starting to understand a little bit about preaching the gospel. You're just understanding a little bit about people. You just, I feel like I'm just starting to understand a little bit about this awesome thing that we're involved with called living for Jesus. So I want to go back. And I go, okay, okay, well, I'll get fit like a 30-year-old. 
You can laugh. I went to the doctor. My, my blood pressure runs 120 on 75.80. Blood test comes up. Everything's great. The doctor said, you're the healthiest fat man I've ever met. In fact, one doctor I used to go to all the time because he was fat. He wouldn't pick, he wouldn't pick on me. He's dead. He had, a, he, he had a gambling problem. And I used to go and try and help him with his gambling problem. So I'd sit there and just give him a bit of counselling. And then say, now, that, how much was my fee? So, oh, yeah, just yours is the same. No, he did. He, he died. He's a good man. Dead. Should have told him about his weight. Forgetting those things that lie behind and reaching forth. How do you reach forth? How do you reach forth? How do you reach forth? How long am I supposed to preach tonight? What's the preaching time? How long are you, how do you reach forth? Here's the exciting thing about what we are as Christians. The Bible says, now faith is the substance, the hypostasis. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen, the certainty, the title deed of things not yet seen. Faith, the substance of things hoped for. Substance and certainty, hypostasis, the standing under with strength of things confidently and certainly expected. The evidence certainty of things not yet seen. So what's that about? What's faith? We're time travellers. We're time travellers. You go back to the prophets. God took John on the island of Patmos on a prison island and said, come with me. I'm taking you out 2,000 odd years and I want you to come up here and I want you to see what's going to happen. And he wrote as fast as he could, probably on his face with tears streaming down his face, writing as fast and as he can the things that he was seeing. Who knows? But he was here on Patmos, but he was out there seeing. God took Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, he showed Daniel, he took Daniel out and showed him the exact day of the crucifixion. Daniel 9. So what are we? We're time travellers. What do you mean? When we start to pray in the Holy Ghost, we start to pray in the language of the Spirit, and we get lost into the presence of God, God is not bound by time. He dwells outside of time, outside of everything a man. He dwells in another dimension. We pray in the Holy Ghost, and press in and worship and push into a place where we step out of the realm that's dictated by time and come into a place where God can say, come for a walk with me. I'm going to show you the things that are hereafter. I want to show you things that I want to take you into. I want to reveal to you things that are to come. Yeah. And something gets anchored in your spirit and you... You're over there, but you're here, and you come back in your prayer time, and you go, wow. Wow, I've got the substance of something I'm confidently and certainly expecting. I've got the evidence of something that hasn't even come into being yet. I remember Pastor Mark talking to me, and he said, God's going to take us to the Silk Road. Up the Silk Road, and I thought, that's impressive. Now I'm watching it happen, and I'm sort of getting involved in it. In we're looking at Bhutan, I've got doors, things into these nations. Whew. Whew. I remember as a young man seeing Reinhard Bonnke's tent and seeing 35,000 people, and thinking, "Oh God, to preach to 35,000 people, preach to 100,000 since then." people as far as I could see. That night, half of them got saved. Prayed about preaching all sorts of places. 
remember one year, I said to the Lord, I felt the Lord say, why don't you ask me for favor? I said, oh, God, I started to pray for favor. And there were a couple of churches that I really wanted to preach in. One of them was the Hillsong Church in Sydney back then. Brian Houston was a good friend of mine, but I wanted to go and preach for his dad. And I'd said, Father, would you give me a favor to go in there? Would you give me a favor? And I felt the Lord put it in my spirit. I said, Lord, I see myself preaching to God. I just, I know you're speaking to me and you're taking me out there and I saw myself preaching in that church and, and I said, Father, something else there, another church. And I asked the Lord and I just kept pressing in saying, Father, I've got something for that church. Then it started to build in my spirit. I went into the city branch of Hillsong, which it was then with Brian's father, went for four days, sorry, went for five days Stayed 25 nights, five nights a week, 30 or 40 saved every night. The power of God like a fire. And Pastor Frank said to me, would you stay three months? I said, I, I can't do it. Went down to Melbourne to the other church I've been praying about and seeking God about and he'd taken me out and shown me. I went in for four nights and stayed 11 weeks, four nights a week for 11 weeks. And we must have had a couple, a couple of thousand get saved there and most extraordinary miracles. And God's now... Now he's talking to me about different things, talking to me about countries and, and, and in prayer, I'm going out there. You see, forgetting the things that lie behind, we reach forward. How do we reach forward? We pray much in the Holy Ghost. We pray much in the Spirit. We get into that realm with God that is outside of time and we let him take us out there and show us the things that are to come and the things that he's got for us and the things that he wants us to do. You're very quiet tonight. You all all right? I'm nearly finished. I'm nearly finished. I think I can keep going. I remember Pastor Mark said to me one night, you've got to preach for an hour and a half. I wouldn't have known how to preach for an hour and a half. I had to preach three different sermons. How long have I been going? You all all right? Who's all right? You want me to, want me to stop or are you all right? You okay? If you want me to keep going, you're not bored. A couple of people are going, oh. That's sleeping, guys, all right? I've been asleep in a few meetings. Don't worry about that. Forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth into the things which are before, I press towards the mark, the prize of the high calling. The mark is really the end result of like an Olympic event. It's like the culmination of what we're called to. It's like the culmination of everything we were called into. And Paul says, I press towards that mark. I press towards, I'm running. I love what he says in Hebrews chapter 12 and uh, verse 1. The Bible says, wherefore, seeing we're gathered about by so great a cloud of witnesses, let, a, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy before him endured the cross and suffered the shame and sat down at the right hand of God and so on. Wherefore, seeing we're gathered about by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run the race with joy, with joy laying aside every weight and sin that so easily besets, looking unto Jesus who's sitting there at the end with that crown the judge used to sit at the end with a laurel wreath and they ran and ran for that prize. And he says, let us lay aside the weight of sin and run with patience, certain endurance, the race set before us. Paul said, I run not without aim. I know exactly where I'm running. I don't box as one that beats the air. He knew where he's going. He says, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I love this. I love this. You know, it was about four years later, maybe later, about 66 AD. Paul was in prison here, but it's almost certain that he was released in his, from his first captivity, first prison sentence. But then under Nero, he was taken again. And 2 Timothy, he was on death row. And I love the way it finished because he, he actually takes what he'd said in Philippians and he 
puts finality to it. And I want to be able, when I'm an old fella, finished and ready to go, I want to be able to say this. This is what he said. Let me conclude this message. He says, I am now ready. Writing to Timothy. Timothy's terrified at what's going on in Ephesus as the pastor. He's under so much pressure. And Paul, who's on death row, is writing to this young pastor and saying, hey, God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. He's encouraging a young pastor while he himself is about to die a horrendous death. He doesn't even know how he's going to die. But this particular piece of scripture was delivered to him posthumously. When Timothy received this letter, Paul would have been taken out onto the Appian Way and it seems from the Fox's Book of Martyrs decapitated by Nero or under Nero's direction. But he says this, I am now ready to be offered like a drink offering. The time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. He says, I want to apprehend that for which I've been apprehended. There on that road when he was knocked to the ground by a blazing vision of light and he heard the voice, Saul, Saul, why hast thou persecuted me? He said, who are you, Lord? He says, I, Jesus, whom you persecute. Those years before. Now he says, I'm ready to go now. It's been fulfilled. He says, I fought a good fight and I finished my course. It's incredible in the Greek, and I've got to be careful in the Greek because I never used to dare, but now I'm just getting a little more confident with the reverend here. He says, I fought a good fight. Two words are used in the Greek. Agon and agonizomai. The word agon is the word from which we get agony. But it really speaks of a struggle probably in the arena or in the Olympics, uh, a strong event in the arena. And he says, and, it, and it's, a, it's, got, it's got a bit of a brutality about it. He says, a beautiful, agonize, in fact, the word, second word is agonizomai, which probably relates more to the brutal sports of boxing and wrestling in the games where men died. The men boxed with leather straps wrapped around their wrists and, and many had died and were scarred for life in the ring. He says, a beautiful, agonizing struggle in the arena of life I have fought. That's my paraphrased version. A beautiful, agonizing struggle against great odds I have fought but I finished my course. What's he saying? I apprehended the thing for which I was apprehended. And he says, I'm ready to go now. And he says, now, now, I'm at the end. I've run the race looking unto Jesus and now the crown's waiting for me. I'm standing there right now, any minute now and I don't care how it happens. I'm stepping out of here into the presence of the one that's holding a crown for me. Now there's a crown for me. And he goes on and he says, Timothy, please come to me. My son Timothy is in the maritime prison, a horrendous prison. He says, Timothy, I want to see you. I'm about to go. Would you come and see me? He says, everybody's left me. Demas has forsaken me. He's gone. Crescens has gone to Galatia. Even Titus has gone to Delmatia. He says, the only one with me is good old faithful Luke. He doesn't leave. He's with me and can you get Mark, Mark John? He'd had that big falling out with Mark all those years before and he says, did you bring Mark? Be profitable for me. Maybe he was saying, I'd love to just say to young Mark, just talk to him and 
just want to, Timothy, uh, you're my son. I just want to see you. Uh, I want to see Mark. I just want to say goodbye to a few people I love before I go, but I'm ready to go. There's no fear. He says, Tychicus is gone. He says, I, I left a cloak in Troas. Um, I left it there with Karis. Um, pretty cold here. I don't know how long I'm here for. I'm on death row. It might be short, it might be long, but it gets pretty cold. But just bring me a coat for these last few days. And some of those books, scrolls and parchments and books, codexes, would you, would you bring them? You know, I'd love to, just in my last few days, just, just have the word to chew on. But he says, anyway, all of Asia left me. Everybody's gone. They're scared to use my name. They get arrested if they use my name. He says, they're all gone. Everybody's walked out on me. He says, notwithstanding the 17, the Lord stood with me last night. Jesus was here in this cell with me last night. He just strengthened me. He was here. He was here. Maybe the ink was still wet when those Roman guards came and the clang of the metal of their armour and the sound of the sheaths of their swords clanging against their armour and the sound of the, the door, the great metal door clanking open. And it's time, Paul. He grabbed him and took him up there to the Appian Way and it's finished. Do you know, there's something wonderfully final there. There's something wonderful final, wonderfully final about just those words. I fought a great fight and I have finished my race. The word there, Domos, a foot race. I finished my foot race. And I've come right now to the one sitting on the throne. And I'm ready to go and get my crown. It's only about four years later. I would love that testimony. That I've run it and fulfilled it. It's very quiet here. very quiet this is wonderful days wonderful days God's days close your eyes with me just let the glory of God fill this room Let the King's glory just come on you. Let his glory come on you. Forgetting the things that lie behind, folks, we press on. We're going forward. Forgetting the things that lie behind. We reach forth, reaching forth. Where's, uh, oh, I'm going to pray for them in a minute. Let his glory come on you. Yeah. I'll leave it for a sec. I've just deposited with you what, I'm feeling. When we walk into heaven, I think I've told you before, a couple of years ago, God spoke to me and he said, look at all the martyrs in history. And I wonder if when we walk into heaven, we walk past them first. 
The Bible says he'd wipe away all tears. I wonder if he wipes them away a little after we've gone into heaven and seen what his plan was for us, and what we could have been, and we, we see what could have been, maybe. See how close we were to the blueprint. But I thought, God, the way I felt at the time, to walk in and walk past those martyrs, I thought, I don't even feel worthy to walk on the same ground. I thought, God, I don't want to have to walk into heaven and hang my head as one who did not apprehend the thing for which he paid such a great price to apprehend me. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of God. He's just breathing on us here right now. I'm not going to move anywhere at the moment. I'm not going to move a step. I don't even feel the lawfully that I can move very far in terms of where we go. I think God's talking to people. Sometimes in this atmosphere, he wants to talk to you. He wants to touch your spirit. He wants to show you things. Let the weight of his glory come on you. It's not by might, nor is it by power. Jesus, just let him touch you. It's between you and he right now. It's between you and he. Let him touch you. Let him touch you. I haven't preached a healing message, miracle message. We'll pray for the sick in a couple of minutes. Is David and Heather in a case, guys? Where are you guys? Where are you hiding? Come here, Dave. Where's Heather? Heather there? Come up here. I saw you on the platform. I didn't know you'd gone somewhere. You guys are heading over to Tampa. Put your hands up to God. The greatest anointing on your life that you have ever known. The greatest anointing on you both that you have ever known as you go. Go under the fire of the Holy Ghost. Go in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Jesus. How many people sitting in the building tonight don't know Jesus? Don't know him. Know about him, never found him. Once walked with him, but you're backslidden. You know you're far from God. You once walked in that intimate place, you, you're far from him. Far from him. You know about him, but you've never ever come into a relationship with him. If that's you tonight, I want you to lift your hand up wherever you are. Just lift your hand so that's me tonight. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to come back to him. I want to find him tonight. Would you lift your hand quickly? Quickly, quickly. Are there those? Just lift it up. Just lift it up. God bless you, sir. Come and let me pray for you. Just come straight down here. I want to pray for you. Jesus, 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 it's a new day, it's a new day, <laughs> it's Caleb isn't it, it's Caleb, it is, I love that guy, oh Caleb my mate, Caleb the hand of God's on you, a soft heart, the spirit of God's touching a soft heart. Never the same. Destined. Destiny. 
destiny. Destiny. Destiny. There's destiny in your heart, Caleb. Destiny. Well, come here, brother. Just come up. Lift your hands. I've forgotten your first name, but I know you well. Is it Mike? Yeah, Mike. Good to see you, man. Jesus. My God, that's the power of the Holy Ghost. Come here, Kate. Come over here, my brother. Put your hands up to God. Father, stir, stir, impart and stir with power. God, God, a greater dimension of power than you've ever known, my God. A new place in the Holy Ghost. Bring him back, bring him back. Bring him back. Gifts of the Holy Ghost. Gifts of the Holy Ghost. Jesus! Power from heaven! Oh, God, help us tonight. Touch us. Caleb, come here. Ah, uh, now hang on. I've got to go through all the names. It is, come up with him. I know. Just trying to... Spitsbergen. Yes. I know. There's so many Spitsbergens, it's just ridiculous. They're like rabbits, I tell you. They're like <laughs> rabbits. William? Yes. The fire of God's on you right now. Fire! Lightning! Oh. Lightning fire! Oh. Yeah. I love this young man. Jesus. Yeah, you got the be best young guy. Fire from heaven! Jesus. I want that row, that row, one, two, three, four, five. It's row one, two, the third row back. Come here, folks. I'm going to pray for the second little while. I just want to let God be God. Good drumming tonight, Dan. You're like a wild man up there. How many love Dan Spitzbergen? The nations are waiting for Dan. He's an honorary Australian. Brother, from your head to your toe, the fire of God is coming on you like lightning. Jesus, power from heaven. Power from heaven. Power from heaven. Jesus' name. Jesus. Power from heaven. Jesus. Spitzbergen's everywhere. Everywhere. Thousands of them. Thousands of them. Thousands of them. Getting touched by the power of God. Hello. How are you? That's the fire of God. Do you feel that right now? Do you feel that? That's the lightning fire of the Holy Ghost. Just try and catch him. Try and catch him, brother. It's always good. You all right, sister? Seems to be. Goodness. My brother. Power from heaven. Jesus. There's something in the air tonight. I'm my normal jovial self. God's stirring me. Ah. Yeah, I've even got some crazy person ringing me. Do you know who that is? Do you know who that is? Just ring me. Andrew Chan. Andrew Chan is one of nine guys that were smuggling drugs into, into Bali and they got caught at the airport getting them out. And he was a ringleader. He was a fierce criminal. And uh, fierce. He's one of the leaders. Death sentence. Got saved. He's baptising in water. He's on death row right now. Doesn't know what day they take him out with the firing squad. And the Indonesians have said, we're going to clear the jail and shoot all the people on death row. He's waiting. They're trying to get him clemency. And he contacts me. And I talk to him. And 
Let me tell you the things he says to me. I said, how's it going? I contact him today, Andrew. Much prayer going in from people. He says, good, thanks, Tim. Just been busy. Got uh, some folk from Australia here at the ATM. And I contact him and he says, uh, he says, six lives are ended. Please pray for their families today. And he says, uh, hi, Tim. Please spread the word. Every person you know to use on social media and so on for these people. He said, I'm not worried about myself, but he said, I'm just concerned about those that are going to get shot that don't know, don't know him. And he sent me a picture of a man being baptised. He said, this man wanted to kill his father and his father was dying. He was willing to give his liver to his father so he would live. He said he, he wanted to kill his father, but when his father was later dying, he, this guy got saved and he then wanted to donate his liver to his father. Unfortunately, though, the, pastor, the, the father passed away. And here's another man, and this man was in court. And as he stood there and they're giving him the death sentence, he started to sing. He started to sing praises unto God. The judge was so overwhelmed, he dropped the death sentence and gave him three years. <laughs> he just contacted me on death row. inspiration hallelujah 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 come here young man right you're not that young but young enough come here brother brother brown shirt yeah come up brother white herb lift your hands come up good to see you bro i've forgotten your name good to see you again john yeah how are you man it's john yeah how are you have you? Do you want a healing right now? Why don't you take it in the name of Jesus? That'll fix it. Brother with the moustache, just come. I want to pray for you. That's a, it's a Wyatt Earp moustache. That's what I was calling you. It's not, your name's not Wyatt then. What's your name? Lauren. Oh, that's close. Hey, Lauren. God bless your Father. Touch him right now with power from heaven. If you're a preacher of the gospel, come up here quickly. If you're a preacher of the gospel, come up this way. Every preacher of the gospel. Every preacher of the gospel, just come. How are you, sir? You Lift your hands. What's your name? Jesus. Have I met you before, haven't I? Maybe. Maybe not. Where do you preach? Where do you, where do you minister? Evangelist? Evangelist. Good on you, man. Jesus, I like this man. He's wide open. <laughs> and uh, Bert Masterson. God. Fire! In Jesus' name. Hello. How are you? Hi. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. you. Haven't seen your boy, but I've seen his mum. <laughs> Father, just touch her right now. She's a great woman of God. Great woman. Her oh, husband was a powerful man. Jesus. Oh, Ooh, yes. I know. Oh. I know. I'm feeling it. How you going, Stewie? <laughs> Still delivering babies? <laughs> uh, you, oh, you fixed up afterwards. Mm -hmm. Good on you, Stu. He's a good man. My God, I love this man. How's all your kids? Good. Jesus. Randy, look, I pray for you every time I come here, but I, every time I look up there, I feel like I just want to lay hands on you. You better bring Rob, bring the, the two twins. We, we used to walk around town and people thought we were triplets. My uh, mother's name was Jessie Black and my best mate was Brian White. And uh, so Brian would come on holidays. Brian White would come up to the Black family. And I found out later that the name Black and White goes back, from what I understand, to the McDonald clan in Scotland who were cattle rustlers. And they would use the names Black or White, but they're actually the McDonalds. So we're possibly from the same line. Uh, where's Rob? Where's he gone? Randy? Randy, Randy, Jesus. Randy, fire! Watch him, watch him, try and catch them. Someone come up here with Rob. Jesus. Fire! Oh, gosh. Come here, Lizzie. 
I reckon Lizzie is absolutely brilliant. She's brilliant. Uh, I, the way it's going, I think I'm going to get her an Australian husband. <laughs> come down. Come down. You, you and Dan, come down. I think you deserve an Aussie husband. I feel that. What do you reckon, Dan? Right. Power from heaven. One of the most creatively gifted girls. And she's wonderful. She's wonderful. 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 This front row, there's something happening here. Come here. Come here. Bring the row. Why not? Bring the row. Bring the row. Jake, you coming to help me tonight or are you just going to stay there and whistle Dixie? Just come and stand up here alongside me. Get the, get, just get the backwash. Just so you can come and stand up here, just catch some backwash. You come up as well, Josh. Just come and get the backwash. All right? Just get the overflow, all right? If I call on you to pray, will you come with me? All right? Just be ready. I just want you ready. Okay? Everything all right? Well done. I've got a magic trick. I didn't bring it. It's the best magic trick. I left it in the pants pocket. Other pants. I actually changed my trousers tonight for the meeting. What's your name? Veronica. I've met you before, haven't I? Hello, Veronica. Are you happy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the power of God, Veronica. That's... We've met before. What's your name again? Valerie. Hello, Valerie. Veronica, Valerie, Vera, <laughs> Violet. <laughs> Jesus. There's power here tonight. <laughs> Let the glory of God come on you tonight. Let the... That the glory of... Hello, sister. What's your name? Alyssa. What is it? Alyssa. Alyssa. Alyssa, that's the power of the living God on you. It's nothing to do with me. My hands feel loaded right now. I, I just feel 240 volts in them. Just in them. Can you feel that? Can you feel it? Come here. Come here. Just stand there. Let's bend this way. Jesus, feel that. Snake. Jesus. Touch the snake. I'm here, Josiah. I've done more drawings for these kids. I've had writer's cramp drawing for them. The one I've done the most for is, oh, gee, who would it be? Hannah, probably. Probably for those white kids, I reckon. Oh, Jonathan. Where's Jonathan? He's probably about eight foot tall now. What happened to all you kids? You keep feeding them or something. Jesus. Jesus, the anointing. Jesus, the anointing. <sighs> Filled. I'm rough and I spit and I yell and I'm just Australian and Jesus. I'll be, very, I'll be very quiet here. Father, touched, touched, touched. Filled with the Holy Ghost. There you go, Will. Jesus. You're not catching that well there, Joe. Come here, Will. I don't, think, I don't think you're up. Fire from heaven on you. No, he's gone. It's no use. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, goodness. What's your name, sir? Raphael. Raphael? Yeah. Can you paint? No. Right. Do you like turtles? Uh, no. You like ninjas? <laughs> no. We're at Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Before his time. Do you remember the Ninja Turtles? Yes. I asked him, is he like turtles? <laughs> he didn't pick it up, did he? Oh no, you. What's your name again? Chris. Yeah, g'day, Chris. How are you? Jesus, you remember the Ninja Turtles oh, back in your day? Absolutely. Jesus, stupid business. <laughs> Power from heaven! <laughs> Like those teeth, man. What do you think of these? 
pretty good, aren't they? They were all worn down. So when I used to talk, I couldn't say snake. It was, it was like snake. <laughs> now it's good, now I can say snake. It was a lot of money to just be able to say that. But now I'm quite articulate. Do you know what articulate means, Jake? At some stage, get your grandma to explain that. Articulate. Jesus. Lift your hands, folks. There's a weight of God here. Is that just me, Pastor Mark? Am I imagining that? No. <laughs> I mean, I mean it's, it's weighty. It's, I can hear Brad... Now let me sneak through here, Caleb. That's it. Well done. I mean, you, Caleb, are a chance. There's Caleb's here by the ton. There's about 30 of them. Jesus! What's the concrete? Don't want to damage it. Power from heaven! Jesus, hit the front row here, Father. Jesus. Jesus. Drunkenness of a reasonably huge quantity. In fact, in fact, I'd say totally tanked. 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 I'm not, I'm not talking just moderate. <laughs> talking about obliterated. <laughs> Fire! <laughs> excessive, excessive quantities of the new wine upon Dave. Bubbling, 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 bubbling. No, bubbling out of your belly, brother. Bubbling out of your belly. Bubbling out of your belly, filled, filled, filled. Hallelujah. <laughs> Excessive, excessively drunk. Exceedingly drunk. Exceedingly drunk. On the new wine. Exceptionally. Filled! Jesus. Exceeding. Changed. Impacted. 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 Filled. Come here, my brother. Come up this way. Where's my guys? Down, out. <laughs> Jesus. Hands up, my friend. <laughs> touched, 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 touched. Touched, 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 filled. How you going, bro? How are you? Can I pray for you? Come on up. What's your name? Have I met you before? Good to meet you, John. Great to meet you. Lift your hands. Fresh oil, John. Fresh touch of the Holy Ghost. Fresh anointing. Like a fire. Like a fire, like a fire. Brother, um, brother, I've known for years and never remember. Brother, brother John, yeah. George, John, John, yeah. How are you, John? Step over here, John. Just step right there. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. My God, you know, I can't get through. I can't get through, so I'm going to have to stretch out. I'm going to have to, no, I'm going to have to trust God here right now. 
right now. Look up here. Fire! Ooh. Jesus. There is nothing like the presence of God. Nothing. Nothing. How are you, bro? What's your name? You got the anointing all over you, Josh, haven't you? Come here. Spirit of the Lord, you got a catalambano, everything that you're called to. You got the hand of God on you like a fire. Got a good grin on you. You're a happy sort of a bloke, eh? <laughs> He's grinning like a Cheshire cat here right now. <laughs> a Cheshire cat, I tell you. Power from heaven. That get, that'll get you grinning. Come here, sister. Sister, hands in the air. Come up. Bring brother his aunt and sister hers are. Come brother and sister. Sister, sister hands in the air, that's brother hands weren't in the air and that's the hand, other sister hands were in the air. I say, what does that mean? No idea. Lift your hands. How are you sister? Guys, stay right with me. Don't walk a step away right now. Don't walk a step away. Because the glory's here in a big way. Come, sister. How are you? How are you? How are you, brother and sister? Are you doing well? I know. Just drink it in. Drink it in. Drink it in. Have a big drink. Just, just drink. Just drink. Hello, brother. How are you? Now here I go. Now I can't get round. I'm trying to try and get a goat track through here. Oh, well, over. I was over. If I fall down, I'll land on someone. I'll kill them, brother. I'll kill them. I've fallen off. Fallen off two platforms up in New Guinea, hit the ground so hard there's an earthquake in Irinjaya. Jesus! <laughs> well, you might as well drink it in. Yeah. Gonna drink, drink. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when, I, yeah. when, I drank the, uh, when I drank the old wine, I drank it strongly. Uh -huh. Now I drink the new wine, I don't sip. I'm not a sipper, uh -uh. not a sipper. I'm a chugger, chugger lugger. Remember that song? Not a sipper, not a sipper. I'm a chugger, chugger lugger. I'm drinking of that Holy Ghost wine. Uh -huh. Who's got the talking stick? Guys, get the talking stick for me, please. Jake, can you find the talking stick? Don't drop it. Right, you can bring it. You can officially carry it with me. Well done, Jake. Just so I used to do all the carrying, but he's got too big now. And those new teeth officially make you the carrier tonight. <laughs> Everyone together. Not a sipper. Not a sipper. I'm a chugger. Chugger lugger. I'm drinking of the Holy Ghost wine. Ha ha. I'm not a sipper. I'm a chugger, chugger lugger. I'm drinking all that Holy Ghost wine. Oh yeah. Hallelujah. Not a sipper. Not a sipper. No, I'm not a sipper. I'm a chugger, chugger lugger. Hallelujah. Jesus. There's such just a beautiful anointing here. I don't really know what to do with it. It's, I mean, it's not mine to do anything with. It's him. I just don't want to do anything that would... Sometimes, you know, we just sit. I, I was in a meeting one night, and it was such an anointing. Jake, you wouldn't believe this. Such an, just such an anointing. You could hold this while I speak, if you like. There was such an anointing. But I just went and sat down. I said, go up the front and, the, and God will touch you. The power of God hit. And I thought, what a phenomenal meeting. God's meeting seemed to be stronger. Well done, Jake. Good work there. There's healing in the house. There's deliverance. There's deliverance. Yeah. 
Yes, there is. There's freedom. Yes. There's freedom. Yeah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Yes. Liberty. <laughs> liberty. Yeah. Is there anyone in this building tonight that battles with depression? Bad? These are the things I'm feeling. Depressed moments where you get right down and you struggle to get through it. It's like you press into the wood. You still feel like there's a spiritual thing that just tangles you. The Tyler back there? How are you doing, Tyler? What rank are you now? Still? I thought you'd be a general by now. What's wrong with you? He's my friend. Why, wow, Johnny Tyler, where are you going with that shotgun? Yeah, that's just a line from it. Nothing to do with anything here tonight. But listen, how many people do suffer with uh, bad dreams? You have bad dreams. Even, even if someone has dreams that are really quite, you wake up in the night and, and quite fearful, satanic stuff that comes against you and you feel like somebody works stuff against you. Um, I'd like to turn some things around. If you suffer with bad dreams or with depression, I want you to hop out of your place and I want you to come down here. But don't rush. I don't want anyone killed in the rush. Just come. Just come. Just come. Don't be ashamed. Just help me clear a path through here, please, Jack. That's it. Just in encourage this brother to move his legs a little. That'd be good. Do you know that, young man? You can just sit over there and wait in case we need your services. Maybe you could take the top off a bottle of water for me, Jake. Just hold that for me. That'd be good. You're leaving Josiah, right? Caleb, you guys are going? Josh? Come sit over here in readiness. <coughs> okay. We want to break this off you. I want to break this. I want to break this off you, off your life. You don't have to have it. Now, we need some catches behind them. You see this sister here? Any sec now. She's this one on the end. God's breaking that thing. God's breaking that thing. God's breaking that. Just watch them. Just watch them. Just watch them. Just watch them. <laughs> Go off you now. Don't, <laughs> devil, just leave her alone. <laughs> Laugh your way to victory. <laughs> Wake up in the night laughing. <laughs> just let it go, that's victory. Someone says, why is she laughing? I've absolutely no idea. Is there something funny? <laughs> Might have looked at some of the folk in the congregation. I don't know. <laughs> Just come up. Ricky, come and pray for it. Let's break this stuff. You don't need, you don't need this victory in your family, in your home, victory. Ha, ha, ha. Let the, yes, yes, yes. Let it bubble out. We're talking victory here. Let it bubble right out of your belly right now. No. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Ha, ha, ha. Ha 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 ha. Are there people watching by way of television? Touched! Touched! Yeah. That's my Mel Gibson imitation. Touched! Sister, totally loosed right now, right now, right now, right now, loosed, loosed, my big brother, loosed, loosed, no more, go, no more, no more, go from your life, no more, how's it back, go from your life. Hey, bro, you're looking good, man. I've known you. How old are you now? 85. Oh, just a youngster. <laughs> yeah, another 19 years, I'll be the same age. Jesus. 
Go. Go. The Bible says there is a river the streams of shall make glad the city of God. Psalm 46. Psalm 46. Yeah. There is a river that flows from God to love. Sing it, Adonica. There is, he won't be watching, will he, Pastor? Hello, Pastor Rodney. <laughs> Jesus. Come here, young man. Jesus. Got the top off that bottle, bro? That's it. Yeah, that's pretty powerful. Okay, just uh, bring it over. I'll take a quick sip. Thanks very much. good water. Look at that. What's that? Over there. <laughs> Jesus, the power of God on this brother. Watch him. Watch him. Watch me. Gosh, I'm a, getting too old for this sort of thing. <sighs> Hallelujah. Arthritis, just come. Arthritis, just come. Just come. If you have arthritis, just come. Someone with arthritis in a hip. Who's got arthritis in a hip? In a hip. Just come. Don't wait there. Don't wait. I mean, come right now. Hands up. Hands up. Jesus! Yeah. My God. I love that colour. Isn't that an absolutely beautiful colour? Jesus, Healing. yeah, healed. Right now, right now. Okay, allergies to food, come up this end. This is the allergies for food healing area, just come. Acid reflux, uh, gluten, food allergies, just come. I couldn't agree more, sister. I know people have been thrown out of meetings for being that happy. <laughs> Father, yeah. loose of that bond right now. Loose. Come, sister. Come, sister. Lift your hands up to God. Internal problems, anything to do. Inward, internal problems, ladies' problems, men's problems, stomach problems, intestine problems, liver problems, general organ problems. Try and catch them, brother. It's a good effort. You catch about as well tonight as the Pakistan cricket team. They're useless. They drop them, man. That's all right. They're going sideways. You can't pick. The Bible says where the tree, if the tree falls towards the north, there it is. If it's towards the south, there it is. I used to wonder why that was there. I thought, Lord, that's quite logical. Are we that? Do we need to know that? And someone said, how come some people fall this way and some fall that way? I said, I'll take you to the scripture in Ecclesiastes. If the tree falls towards the south, there it is. It falls towards the north. And they said, oh, thank you. That really explains it. That may be the only time the scripture's ever been used for any purpose. <laughs> Sister Pink, come up this way quickly, please. Sister Pink, right there. I want every person with blood pressure to come. If you suffer with high blood pressure, come, Sister Pink. No, I mean, come right now. Are you happy tonight? Is anyone glad they're in church? I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you honestly, over the years, people have sort of thought I was a bit flippant or whatever. I can tell you, I've got a sense of humour. I find most things quite humorous. I'm hopeless at counselling anyone because while I'm, while I'm trying to counsel them, I'm cartooning them mentally. And, and, and then, I start, then my eyes start laughing and I can't hide it. And they're, trying to, they're in tears explaining how their dog's run over, they've gone broke, their mother-in-law's coming to stay with them and so on. And... and uh, my eyes are laughing and I'm, I'm going, eyes, look really miserable. Try, and then I try and squeeze a couple of tears out just to, and then I go, look, then I realise I'm no good. Just, if, in fact, if, if I can't get something happening at the altar, then, then I, I say, look, uh, go and see Pastor Mock. He'll sort you out. You go, not that, not that. 
Sister, that's the glory on there right there. How, what a lovely smile you've got. Are you always happy? What's your name? Rosalia. What is it? Rosalia. Well, Gloria Dios. <laughs> Jesus said, Tell Senor. Muchas gracias, Senor. Buenas tardes. Buenas noches. Buenas what? Buenas noches. Noches. Buenas noches. Hey. Muy fuego. Is that right? More fire? Más Muy fuego. Oh, I was close. I was close. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. happening. Got any testimonies? Anything you want to tell anyone about Jesus tonight? Any preaching? A little bit? A couple of words? <laughs> not going so well, Caleb, he's a bit drunk, I think. What's, ha what's happening? Just share, just you preach a bit. Tell us about Jesus. <laughs> Now oh, come on, get fired up now. Right. Take that mic and get fired up and tell them to go on, let's go with it. Come on, let's go with it. <laughs> Limited success tonight. You got anything to share, Jake? Or are you just relaxing with the boys? <laughs> back problems. Just come. Just come. It's going to be all night, but we're going to go, I'm just working through the old song. Neck bone connected to the backbone. Backbone connected to the shoulder bone. Shoulder bone connected to the hip bone. Hip bone connected to the leg bone. Leg bone connected to the knee bone. Knee bone connected to the foot bone. That's sometimes how I work through, just singing that song. It takes a long time, but we get there. How are you, bro? Good to see you. What are you suffering with? Back. Don't drop him. Jesus! Come, sister. Come for a miracle. <sighs> Lift your hands. What are you suffering with? What's just your back? Scoliosis. Scoliosis. My God. Satan, in Jesus' name. Come, sister. Hmm. <clears throat> What's wrong? No pain anymore. Anymore. In Jesus' name. What else is there? Tonsils? What is it? I just threw that one in. Oh, hello, sister. I threw tonsils in. You never hear about tonsils anymore. We used to, do you remember we used to get our tonsils out and they give us ice cream? Did you have yours out? <laughs> Come on out, old tonsils, that a tonsillectomy? <laughs> Never hear about it anymore. I don't think people have tonsils anymore. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, a miracle. A miracle. Asthma, just come. Just come. Asthma, shortness of breath. Breathing problems, just come. Just come. You know, in this atmosphere, you can just take from God. You don't even have to come down the front. I'm, I actually feel almost obsolete. I quite seriously. You could sit there, close your eyes, person next to you put their hand on your shoulder. If you need physical healing tonight, that's what I want you to do. I want you to lift your hands, lift your hand, okay? People next to you, just put your hand on their shoulder. Just put your hand on their shoulder. And now just soak them under the anointing. Just soak them. Drench them. Drench them with healing grace. I mean drench them with healing grace. Hallelujah. Drench them. There's a little baby we're going to pray for. Is that you? Bring that little baby up here. 
Bring that little one up here. Yeah. Bring that little one up. This little one's been through a bit of a rough time and you need a miracle. Just everybody reach out to God. Let the healing grace of God. Any babies that need healing, I tell you, the devil is the biggest coward under the sun. He picks on babies. He's always tried to pick on babies. We're going we're gonna to have a breakthrough. Just, yeah, just take a seat right in the front row. We've met before, haven't we? I've met you, haven't I? I, do, I have to. Where? I know, I know, I know. I know you were down there. Good to see you, bro. I remember that now. How's she doing? You've got change happening? We do. She, this is the longest she's ever been without oxygen. Oh, wow. Hello, gorgeous. Five hours. Hello, gorgeousness. Hello, sweetness. Good to see you, bro. I remember you. I remember praying for you that night and feeling like, God, Jesus, tonight, I would like some people that just really have some compassion and feel the anointing on you. Ruthie, come and bring that anointing. Ge Geneva, some of you ladies, because it's a baby thing here. So we'll get some of the girls on the job. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. We're going to... And, and listen, Aunt, little Anna... You know the story, you know the story, little Anna. Well, she's like a firebrand now. She's running around. It's like, it's like she's on steroids, just racing around, little biceps and weightlifting and paragliding. Put your hands on Lily. Couple of, couple of guys, couple of ladies, just ladies come. And if you've got an anointing on your ladies, come right now. And, and just reach your hand out to this little baby. And Father, tonight, we take dominion. Come on, Heather, bring that anointed hand. Oh, you got a baby there? Dan will look after the baby, Uncle Dan. Uncle Dan, look after that baby. That's it, jump right in. We begin to take authority here right now. Ruthie, I want you to take authority. You've got an anointing on you. This little baby, look, she's grinning, she's smiling, she's happy. In Jesus' name, we declare right through her little body, every element of her being, we declare the healing power of God tonight. Every trace of this thing gone every trace of this thing gone we declare from head to toe devil get your hand off this baby get your hand off this baby get your hand off this baby tonight my god in jesus name stretch your hand out boys every trace of sickness every trace of disease every problem in this little one gone by the power of god gone by the power of God. We thank you for the fight of faith. We thank you for the fight of faith. We declare your victory. Everybody stand up and stretch your hand. Begin to declare the victory right now. We declare it. We declare it. Have a shout right now. Have a shout right now. We break this thing. We break this cursed thing. Come over sister. Come and pray. Come and pray. We break this thing off her life. We break this thing off her life. We break this thing off her life tonight. We declare, we declare your healing grace. Declare your healing grace. Declare your mighty power. Declare your mighty power. Now right through the building, right through the building, if you're sick in your body, lift your hand. Christians put a, Christians lay a hand on them. When I count to three, we're going to start to shout. We're going to start, shout a declaration of miracles right through the building. And after we've shouted, start to move that part of your body. Start to do something you couldn't do. Receive your miracle. When I shout, count to three, receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Hallelujah! 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 Victory tonight! Victory tonight! Victory tonight! 
victory tonight. Right through the building. Victory tonight. Sick bodies be healed. Broken bones restored. I tell you, people are getting healed. People are getting healed right now. People are getting healed right now. Start to move it about. Start to move that part of your body. Test that part of your body. Stretch it out. There's a wave of healing just went right over this place. It's a wave of healing right over this place. Take your miracle. Bend that back. Lift that arm. Test that shoulder. Do something you couldn't do. Do it now. Take your healing. Take your healing. If you're watching online, take your healing. Move it about right now. Take it. Take it. Take it. Someone back there just got healed. Someone just got miraculously healed back here. Take it now. Take it now. That sister jumping up and down. What happened to you? Come and tell us. Are you healed? Bring her up here. That jumping one. Are you healed? She healed? She's not testifying much, but what's happened? What did she get healed of? Arthritis? Did you get healed of arthritis in your hands? Well, bring her up here. Help her up. She's a bit drunk. We better get a testimony, boys. What do you think? Bit of a testimonial, guys. Help her up. She's as drunk as anything. Watch out. There's bodies everywhere. Help her, help her, guys, help her. That's it. You, you, just got, you just got healed. Come here, sister. I don't know if we'll get a test from me, but she just got healed. Just bring her over here and watch her. Watch her. She could go anywhere. North, south, east, west. I don't know. What, hap what happened to you? What happened? Arthritis? Uh, no, I don't know. What? what? No, 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 no. Not arthritis. What, what? What was it? What was it? I don't know. I just couldn't move my finger. You couldn't move your finger and your finger's moving. That's, that's a miracle. Couldn't move a finger, now it's away. Well, my God, just thank you for that finger. So I've had a finger healing. Who else has had a healing of something? Lift your hand, give me a wave if God healed you of something. Just lift it up quickly. What's happened? What's happened? What's happened, brother? Pain in your hands, gone. Someone over here was healed. What was that? Your back's been healed tonight. God bless you. What happened, Caleb? Your ankle, what was wrong with it? When? Come up here. Come here. Come here. Broken ankle. When did that? What was when? <laughs> Tell us the story. Give it a bit of a burst. Well, I, I was into that. That thing. That's what it's for. <laughs> I was skateboarding down a hill. Yeah. And my friend in front of me wiped out. I hit his board, and I went flying. And I my ankle bent outwards, and I broke my a small bone in my ankle really bad. Were you, were you in plaster with it? Did you have plaster on your ankle? Uh, no, no. Um, the bone stayed aligned, so I just yeah. had a boot. But I've been, I've been. You've had a boot. Yeah, I had, I had a boot, but I've been out for about ten weeks. What couldn't you do when you came in tonight? Well, I, I haven't been able to really uh, move around like that. So you couldn't I, run before. I can't, I, I can't run. Well, go on. Off you go. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. How's Bubs going? How's Bubs going? Ruthie, you still praying? How's she doing? Jesus, we take authority. Who yeah, else? Who else has been healed? Give me a wave. Who else had a miracle? Give us a wave. Who else? Who's had a touch from God? You know it. Who's had depression go out of your life tonight? You know it. Who knows the Holy Ghost has done something tonight? Who's happy? Who's miserable? Who's encouraged? Who, who's going to go and catalambano the thing for which you've been catalambano? Everybody say, I'm, I'm going to start catalambanoing. I'm catalambanoing. We're going to catalambano for this baby a little bit more. Stretch your hand. Stretch your hand. Every trace of this thing. We declare turnaround. It's, you know, sometimes things happen instantly. Other times you fight for it. You fight for it. It's the fight of faith. Little Annie was a fight of faith. I was getting phone calls every few days from the boss here. And he'd say, pray. He said, we're going into something. Look serious. Was it just the lungs were born when she, she was premature and the lungs were not formed properly? or? She, um, she had a ring around her trachea and her 
Yeah, yeah. And it made a dent in her trachea. And okay. Her nose wasn't open. Okay. So they opened that. And open in Jesus' name. Her ears open. Too. Open. She said she was blind. Yeah. And then they changed it. And yeah. So she can see. They're changing. This thing's coming through. Amen. Yeah. Jesus. Changed. She changed. changed. And she's looking everywhere. She's looking everywhere. She's watching everything. She's watching Pastor Mark. She says, he's a wild looking fella. <laughs> Jesus. Everyone just stretch your hands. Say, look, this little baby is going to be completely whole. Amen. Completely. Yes. What's this little one's name? Yes. She's cute, aren't you? Dad's girl. Dad's girls. Dad, you, t you, this, you carry this a fair bit too. You carry this. You really do carry this. Put your hand on Dad here. You guys just put your hand on Dad. Put your hand on Mum. We're believing for total healing here. Geneva, would you come and just lead us? Come and just pray for a total for this family, totally, totally through. Father, we just thank you. Father, we thank you for the glory of heaven on this family right now. The anointing, Father, that breaks everything. Father, the healing in the name. We thank you, Father. Yes, we do. Right now. Yes, we do. Your healing anointing. Yes. Total healing, total healing, total healing, total healing tonight. Jesus, 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 total healing, total healing, total healing, total healing. We unite together for total breakthrough. Lizzie, come and bring that anointed hand up here. Thank you. Amen. 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 Now, in the name of Jesus, I command these lungs to clear. Yes. Now. Yes. We take dominion. Yes. 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 Right now. Totally. 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 Jesus. Hello, gorgeous. Look at you. Look, you're looking everywhere. Look. Touch you. Touch you, Lord. Those little lungs. Those little lungs. Yeah, what it... All the things you've just done for Annie, we see it again. We see the, we see total restoration. And it's been, you've had to fight the fight of faith, haven't you guys? You've been fighting the fight of faith. You're, doing, you're winning. You the strength. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Yeah. Come up here, sir. What's wrong with the legs, bro? It was ripped off and put back on. Oh, wow. Well, how'd you do that? I rode in front of a car that was going 50 miles oh, an hour on my bike. A couple of guys here. A couple of guys. A couple of guys with me. Mom Jesus, <laughs> let this, your miracle grace, right? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Total miracle. Total miracle. Total miracle. Total miracle. Total, hello, sister. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Father, your mighty healing power right now. Oh! No! Jesus. 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 Jesus, there's power in that name. Everyone say the name of Jesus. Miracle power in the name. Total healing in the name. Restoration. Creative. Total restoring of this baby. To full strength. In the name of Jesus. In the name belong Jesus. In the nombre de Jesus. Sur le nom de mon Dieu. Uh, hallelujah. I think that's French. Just lift your hands. Father, let the glory, let the glory, let the glory fall down. Oh, ho, 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 ho. 
Everybody repeat after me, the joy of the Lord, the of the Lord is my strength. Is my strength. I'll, take I'll take some strength right now. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Pastor Mark, it's yours. Thank you, boys, for another outstanding job this year. Thank you, Thank Reverend. You, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Doctor. I don't need that one. You don't, I don't need, need the talking stick. And the talking stick. Well, listen, um, what we want you to do tonight is we want you to uh, share with in uh, Evangelist Tim Hall's ministry. Just participate with him through giving. And, I mean, we just love him so much. Oh, We're so blessed at, about the things that God's doing through him in different parts of the earth. I'm a little captivated by baby right now. I guess I have a close friend of mine recently, and he just he showed such a great he showed such a great ferociousness in the kingdom of God, such a state of va of being valiant. He, had, he just finished a four-day, five-day meeting in, in Central America down near, just outside of Alpha Mexico. And the meeting was completed. And he was headed home. It was worn out. They were exiting stage. And uh, he was exhausted. At any rate, as he's going out the door, they put three children in front of him. All three were deaf and mute. And, of course... As soon as they put the children in front of them, the cameras came out from every place because cameras, as certain people like to try to invalidate things. And, and the, the cameras were really not so much about capturing the miracle as it was really about trying to invalidate what was going on. And he grabbed a hold of the, he grabbed a hold of the first little girl and um, as soon as he touched her, the Lord said, whatever you do, don't stop praying. And he, the girl that he grabbed a hold of to start with, she was very defiant. She was a, about a 12, 13-year-old girl, and she didn't want to be prayed for. Very, very defiant. She just kept trying to pull away. Forty minutes later, John is still standing there saying, in the name of Jesus, I command you to hear and speak. The girl, all of a sudden, 40 minutes later, people are just fainting. And this is, this is being valiant. This is being valiant. This is, I'm up in your face, and you will obey me. Death, death, you will obey me. You spirit of death, you will obey me. You spirit of mute, you will obey me. And there's, not, and there's not a lot of people like that left on the earth. Just tell you that right now. All of a sudden, the young girl just started, she started sobbing. She, she melted to the ground. She could both speak and hear. And then the next child, and then the next child, all three. And... John just, John's probably watching tonight. Just got back from Cuba, getting ready to do a great crusade in Cuba and Havana. Cuba, we're getting, we're getting ready to go. I'm going to take Tim with us and a few other people. But, you know, sometimes we lock into things. We locked into with, with, with little Anna. Anna was born one pound, three ounces. And we locked in. We just, we just go in. We would lay our hands on her. And we, every step of the way, when they said that there was this problem, we said that there is not that problem. I sat with the... I, was, I sat with the, the physicians, all the attendant physicians, cardiologists, um, every, the neurologists, everybody that was involved. And I, and I said, guys, listen to me. I, I want you to know I understand your medical training. I have a lot of respect for your medical training. Now, you need to respect where I'm coming from. You have a concept of what it means to bring healing through the skill set you learn in medical school. But we have the power and the authority of the name of Jesus. And we're not defying you every time we turn around and say this problem or that problem. We're telling you we are defying the power of sickness and disease, which we've been given authority over. And it was a beautiful thing because we sat there with a lot of, you know, a lot of medical scientists, clinical scientists. And, and uh, every one of them watched the miracle power the Lord Jesus Christ work. When they said there was MRSA, we smashed MRSA, MRSA was gone. When they said there was respiratory problems, we smashed respiratory problems. 
I mean, every step of the way. And I know the battle that you guys go through. Because, you know, uh, Joshua and Allie were raised up in faith. Radical, determined faith. You listen to me, command ye me, saith the Lord kind of faith. And then, you know, you get around all of these various different counselors and people trying to op offer, you know, sympathy and empathy. And they don't understand this realm. And you stand fast in the realm. And then you, you, if you'll stand up and not bow to everything that er, uh, many other people are bowing to when it comes to medical science, you'll see the power of God work. You know, what, tonight, I'm going to tell you what happened with me. I grabbed a hold of her. I could feel the compassion of the Lord Jesus. For me, miracles, the miracle power of God, I, I really um, I associate it with deep compassion. Usually, I'm just, I turn into a crybaby. And under that compassion, I know that Papa will take care of baby. She'll be healed from the crown of her head, soles of her feet. She'll hear, she'll see. Yeah. We command this, you, this problem that's going on with her lungs yeah. to be resolved tonight. Yeah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. See, the, the thing about it is, if you can touch the heart of God and Father and in, in, involve one second in the suffering, he, Jesus brought the double cure. If I can touch, if you can touch the realms of his heart and where he's at, his compassion, then all of a sudden we can connect with the faith. And then things start happening. And, you know, we, we just have to be willing, we have to be willing to step out and brave it. Because, you know, if you think, well, you want to be praying, nothing happens. Well, listen, I'm willing to put my reputation on the line. Huh? I'm willing to say, I'm willing to go all the way out with, all the way out there on the water of faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because really what we want to go, we want, we want to demonstrate the power of God in such a way to where the paraplegics stand up under our hand, under the command of the name of Jesus Christ. I praise God for TL and for everything else that we've heard and learned over the years of, of the word going forth and mass healing. Are you okay? Mass healing, things taking place like that. But you know what? I love to see miracles work. And when I heard, when Allie told me, you guys were to come. And I told this to Tim earlier today. I said, I see the working of a miracle. Okay. And the Lord's going to strengthen you. Okay. He's going to strengthen you. Because you, you, you've got some, you got, you got a hold of some radical faith in this. Okay. Look at Allie. Okay, the gift of faith. I've watched I, er, almost every meeting. She's so hooked up with faith. The gift of faith comes on her for whatever it is that she's asking. And I'm just, I'm going to believe right now with you. Oh, I'm sorry, what is your name? Your husband, the husband name, dad's name, Matt. Yeah, oh, we're gonna, I'm going to believe with you. Listen, there's something that is key. It's called in, in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 16. If we can be strengthened by the spirit in our inner being then we have the ability to do and believe and go through whatever we need to, you know, go through in order to see the change that God has promised. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Matt, that you be strengthened by the Spirit in your inner being. You, you just get built up with confidence, boldness, because I know you're exhausted. You go through this stuff, I, I know, I understand. I've walked a lot of people through a lot of different situations. Jesus is the miracle worker every time. If I can get people to plaster the name of Jesus all over it, if I can get people to get on their face, and if for nothing else, pray and say, oh God, strengthen me, okay? Help my unbelief to stand strong in faith. If I can just get everybody to do that, we can work a miracle. And I don't care if the miracle is worked in one second, 40 minutes, 40 days. It doesn't matter, really. <laughs> the issue is the miracle at the end of the day. Okay? Nengjalapate. Defretesity. Ifretesitu. Nexi pranamase. Father, I ask you to touch Matt's life right now. Ifretesi. Touch him, strengthen him. Ifretesit. Ifretes. Ifretai. Pitonamasa. Menesipit. Now, I just want you to understand, people, I want you to understand, this ha sickness and disease and these kinds of events have nothing to do with God. Christ Jesus 
intervene. He stepped into the realm of man to destroy the works of the devil. This has everything to do with the fall, with the power of darkness. And what God has done is he's given us the power as co-inheritors with the Lord Jesus Christ, as the heirs of God. People think that's going to be something in the future. It's now. It's now. I can't help it. God's people don't recognize that all authority is in the name of Jesus Christ. And he's looking for any. He said all authority is given to me, heaven and earth. And he's just looking for us to hook up with him. Amen. Amen. And so I just, I pray in Jesus' name that every one of you gets so ferocious. you so ferocious that you're not going to stand still and watch somebody get sick. You not stand still and watch disease. You not stand. You're not going to walk by someone crippled and not jerk them out of the wheelchair. We went into one nation. We went into one nation and we spent two weeks with the youth in the Bible colleges, Presbyterian, Methodist. Okay, I'm not talking about Pentecostals. Pentecostals was there too. After two weeks, we spent talking to them about faith and the ministry of faith. In the, the crusade, they were actually grabbing people out of the wheelchairs and dragging them around. My first pastoral instinct was to stop them. But the Lord said, don't mess with them. I mean, people scarred up knees, just dragging them all over this giant stadium. Well, what happened is these, these people began, got up and took off walking. Some of them took off running, coming up on the, on the platform because there were some people, young people, saying, wait a minute. We just heard for two weeks about faith. We're going to get radical. And so in the name of Jesus, I believe that, man, I believe that you and your wife and your, your whole family just get radical about faith. Get radical about Jesus. I mean, just throw everything in with total abandonment on this. Okay? And watch what God will do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, I, I want everyone, listen, if, you want to, if, you're, if you're gonna write a check tonight, just write it out to APM for short or Abiding Place Ministry. And uh, if you're giving uh, by way of credit card, you need to get past that, but nonetheless. Now, if you're gonna use credit card, hopefully you're, you're paying it off every month. <laughs> and you're not getting saddled with debt. But just worship the Lord. Do it. In, I want you to do it this way. I want you to. I don't want you to do it because you feel like you just need to part, be a part of giving. I want you to do it because you believe there's a miracle in it. I, I, because you believe that there is a place in which you are hooking up with faith and obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ to be a part of the things that He's doing in the earth right now. And um, as you do, Papa's promised to work a miracle. Smallest acts of obedience result, listen, smallest act of obedience results in the greatest miracles of faith. Somebody said, how do I step into the great miracle of faith? Small acts of obedience. It's really the truth, I'm telling you. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know, I believe we've seen every miracle in the Bible. I have not, I, I have not personally eyewitnessed anyone walking on the water but I know Mel Tari and some other people that was in the uh, Like a Mighty Wind revival in Indonesia. They walked, they, you know, there was some eyewitnesses, to a group of God's people walking across the water. But I think everything else we've seen. We've seen, we've seen some wonderful things and we're going to see more. These are the days of great exploit. You know what the Lord told me for the 2015? Father told me that this is the year, this, and this year we'll step in and it's going to be a, a great necessity. But on many levels, we'll step in. For those who are strong, this isn't for the weak. Those who are strong and they know their God, we're going to see great exploits. These are the days of great exploits. And, I mean, we just want to be radically, ferociously violent for the kingdom of God. I mean, we want, I mean, when I say violent, Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. I'm just radically, you know, violent for the kingdom of God. Everywhere we see Satan doing something, we're going to put a stop to it because... Jesus has placed us in the position of authority as his sons. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Uh, praise God. And it's wonderful to see uh, radicalness on people's face. I like seeing the radical there. Amen.
Bad of the key in the most here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And many more testimonies we could give of faith tonight. And uh, I'm sure that you could too. Everybody's sitting here, most everybody's sitting in here. I'm sure you've had miracles in your life, seen miracles. The power of God is present to heal. Always. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, come worship the Lord. Find a bunch of people around you. Hug them. Tell them that you love them. Bless them in Jesus' name. 